For 44 years, I sat at home and supervised kids. I was a mother at 23, and that's what I've been till now. I know very well that I am where I am today, even sitting here on this interview chair because of the name I have. So it's, it's something I'm very well aware of. But henceforth, what I do is, is all on my own. When, when I look at him, I don't look at him as an actor. I look at him as dad who I have lunch and dinner with and who I spend time with. How does something like that happen where you have two things which look so similar? It's a, it's a very generic motif and it's a generic um, slogan. Does it... By the way, I just want to tell you it's our largest seller. <laughs> We've sold out of it. Really? <laughs> Ironically, yes. <laughs> Shweta, welcome to Film Companion. I have, of course, over the years interviewed the rest of the family, uh, but you were always the sort of mysterious, low-key bachan. And now, what, in the space of a few weeks, you've launched a clothing line, you've got a book published. What is going on? First of all, thank you for having me. Um, I'm not mysterious, I'm just shy. <laughs> and I'm not in movies, so that's why I think we haven't met that much. Hmm. Um, I, yeah, so there's my label, MXS, with Monisha Jaising that was launched in September. And my book is um, out on the 10th of October. Uh, and it's exciting. So, was this hard? I saw this interview you did where you said that um, I'm 44, I have two children, and I've jumped into a business I know nothing about. Was this challenging? Um, yes. Writing or designing? Both. Both have their own challenges, and um, but I think you have to just jump in and then see where it takes you. So the designing bit is, is, is going well so far, and, uh, and the writing bit uh, I'll know shortly. Are you, are you designing yourself? Yes, yes. So we have a team, which is Monisha and me, and we sit and we design um, sort of our own. own and your tastes are similar enough to kind of... Well, you know, they're similar, but also we have different outlooks. So that always helps mm. because then you're always sort of, um, how do I explain it? You're bouncing off each other. Right. You know, I like this and I like this. And then it's a mix of two things. So it's not, I mean, if you see the designs, Monisha already has a label. Of course. So it's, when you see MXS, it's not entirely Monisha and it's not entirely Shweta. People who know right. um, how I would dress on, and you know, what my tastes are do say that. So mm. it's, it's a good mix of two, which I think is always, always good. And the book, Paradise Towers, has, is dedicated to your grandfathers. Yes. You said for the gift of words. Yes. What was it like to grow up with these literary giants? Um, well, so true to the tag of, you know, being creative artists, they were, they were rather aloof and moody, but always uh, sort of, you know, I mean, they, they were nurturing in their own way. There was always a lot of stories being told on the dining table and a lot of, you know, sort of, whether it was story, my, my dadaji would tell me stories of the Ramayan, my nana who's done extensive work on the dacoits um, in Chambal, you know, would re recount his experiences. And just their language, just to sit there and hear them talk. I mean, it's, it was just wonderful. Did they encourage you to read a lot? You know, were you always a reader? Always. Always from when I was a little girl. And uh, they were always very busy, but it was just a house in which everyone read. Mm -hmm. My dadi especially was an avid reader and she would sort of pull out books from her shelf and say, okay, now at this age I read this and you should, you know, maybe try this out. And my nani also, who reads mainly Bengali books, but you know, would never sleep without reading a book. So it's just something that was just a part of my life. But so were films, Shweta, and you never considered that? You know, um, actually, Anupama, I was scared of watching Hindi movies. Really? My father was always getting beaten up. There was always so much blood. But he always ended up beating up everyone. So <laughs> I, I, I was terrified of them. I you never, never watched them? I never, I never watched them for a very, very long time. I think I must have been about nine, almost ten, when I watched my first Hindi movie. What was that? Um, I think it was Ram Bal Ram. I know there was a lot of violence in that as well, but I think I was old enough to sort of, you know, understand. I, I, I would take it very personally. He was always, you know, getting beaten or if someone was mean to him or he was always sort of, you know, being held back by all these goons. I, it wasn't fun for me at all. I didn't watch them. I didn't like going on set. Um, yeah. So it was never even in consideration? No, never. Wow. And what, but, but your parents 
both are such amazing actors and of course have been part of some of the greatest stories that that have been told in Hindi cinema. So uh, how did they influence you as a storyteller? It was, a, again, I, I say this when I've been asked um, about the book and, I, you know, when you're born into a family of actors, I don't think they're standing in front of the mirror pulling expressions. That's mm -hmm. not, I don't think that's a part of their craft. Mm -hmm. What I think is the main craft of, a, of an actor and a good actor is that they they observe. They're keen observers, especially little quirks or, you know, little characteristics in everyday life or, you know, how certain people react to certain occasions, whether it's joy, grief, bereavement. And this is something I, I, I've just picked up. I've always been that person. I was very shy, so I was always quiet and sitting in the background. But looking at people. But looking at people and, you know, I'd sort of come home and say, oh, this one was doing this and, and, and this one was doing that and maybe mimic it a little bit and, and you know, so, yeah. And I think that translates into when you're writing. You need to have to observe human beings or environments and different people and how they react in different environments. I think it's really helped. And that's always been there. Always, <laughs> always. So, Shweta, what do you respond with when the great N-word nepotism comes up? When, when somebody says to you that, but of course you would have a label and of course you would have a book publisher like Harper's uh, because you're a bachan. What do you respond with? Well, I know very well that I am where I am today even sitting here on this interview chair because of the name I have. So it's, it's something I'm very well aware of. But henceforth, what I do is, is all on my own. Um, my father hasn't written my book. They haven't designed, helped with designing. They're supportive as any, any parents would be. But it's for me to sink or swim. So, you know, it, it only takes you this far and then it's, it's your own talent or lack of talent that kicks in. Tell me, with the book when I was reading it, um, you know, I don't know, have you seen a film called Jagte Raho with Raj Kapoor? I haven't actually, but that's one of the things my mom said to me. She says, you know, it reminds me of Jagte Raho it and did. I haven't watched it. I, I need to watch it. I actually intentionally stayed away from it because, you know, every, my mother's the only one in the family who's read the book. And, and she said, oh, it sounds like Jagte Raho. And I said, I don't want to watch it because then I don't want to that then, too, yeah, yeah. you know, um, it spill into my writing. But... Uh, Yes, I have heard. Of, I have. You know, heard of because it. it was interesting because this this man goes into a building complex and mm -hmm. and then he's and he's mistaken it for a thief and he's sort of um, trying to escape and trying to run away reveals the hypocrisy of these so called sort right. of you know right. uh, uh, educated middle class people yeah. in each of those apartments. Right. Uh, what were your literary influences for this? Um, actually. So it's something that just came out of my head one day. Um, I had read a, a, a book by an Egyptian author, and I'm very bad with remembering names, and it was called The Yakubian Building. It was about a building in Cairo, and I just love the premise of it and the different people there in their lives. Mine is a very, very, very simplistic version of that. It's, uh, it's a short, simple story, but that would probably be the first reference. And uh, yeah. But what inspired you, Shweta? Literally, you were just sitting there and one day you said, there's a book idea. So, um, you have kids. Yes. So, when, when they're of a certain age, mine are now 21 and 18. Mm. Um, there comes a time when, if you're wise, <laughs> which I think I am, you have to learn to just take 10 steps back. Absolutely. Or you're at each other's throats and there's too much rebellion and there's all that, you know, back and you don't want to deal with that. So... I decided when I sent my kids off to boarding school um, that I was going to take a few steps back and I was going to let them navigate this. But that left me um, without a job. So I was just sitting around doing nothing. And I, uh, a, a friend of mine introduced me to Sarita Tanwar who then asked me to write a column for her. And she said, you know, write me something and send something. So I did. And she loved it. And she said, why aren't you doing this? So I said, I, I, I don't know, no one's ever asked me. So she said, come on, do this. And I, and I did start doing it. And, um, you know, people responded to it favorably. And that gave me a lot of confidence. And uh, then this whole, you know, I've always written. I've always had stories, you know, in my in my. Do you write? I mean, are they yes. in a notebook somewhere? Yes, they are. Really? And a lot of them are in the shredder now because uh, I, I go back after five years and, oh, what is this rubbish? And I go and, <laughs> I, I, you know, I shred them. Are you pretty harsh on yourself? Yeah. I think everyone's their own worst critic, no? Mm. So um, that's what I used to do. And then this time around, I said, okay, no, you know, and you get it. It's, it's like a muscle. The more you write, 
the, the better it gets and the stronger it is. So I just got into the habit of writing and then, you know, the book just flowed. It just and came to me one morning and I just sat down and finished five chapters. Really? Yeah, and then it took one year to finish the rest. <laughs> <laughs> but are you dis were you disciplined? Like, no. would you do it every day? No, I'm not disciplined. I would try to do it every day. I would open my laptop and then I'd start surfing the net. I'd go on Twitter. I, you know, I'd just uh, lose myself in, in all kinds of things. But I know, I know, <laughs> yeah. it's really hard. And that was what it, it, was it like. is yeah. really hard. So, Shweta, I was curious why all the women in the book are, you know, they're like. Um, either sort of supervising kids or there, you know, there's the gossip, there's the elderly lady who's looking through binoculars. Yes. So I, I was just wondering, like, why are all of them like that? You know, like, I, I didn't see any character who's, who's like, got a job apart from the one who, well, I don't want to say okay. anything. Yeah. So again, um, as I told you, for 44 years, I sat at home and supervised kids. Mm. And, uh, and that was my life. So if, I don't have maybe a reference to context, so to speak, right. of you know someone going to an office or what their day would be like, a woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for me, it would be... I, this came naturally? It just came naturally to me. It came naturally to me that this is what I could write easy, easier. But you know, you are right. You know, some of them should get jobs. Maybe in part two. <laughs> <laughs> Paradise but Stars, the sequel. That said, uh, <laughs> Being a mother and supervising kids, a full -time it's job. a full-time job oh, and God, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a tough job with very, uh, I don't know, diminishing uh, uh, returns, yes, by the way. Yes. But uh, yeah. Yeah, no, no, it's, listen, I know, I know how <laughs> hard it is. Oh my God. Um, you know, uh, speaking of which, you wrote, I think like two years ago, I saw this column that you had done and, and it was, I think the headline said that, can my daughter have her private life back? Oh. Um, and. Um, but after that, Shweta, you have become more of a public figure. So has she. Mm -hmm. um, is this negotiation between private and public hard for you? Because you haven't always been in the public eye. It's very hard. Um, I'm, I'm an extremely private person. And, um, and, you know, yes, for certain things, if I have a book out or, you know, a line out, I've, I've been forced to actually overcome my shyness. So as I always say, I'm not in my comfort zone. Even, you know, being out there, it's not in my comfort zone. Um, but if it's something you have to do, then you just have to do it. For the children, um, it's tricky because uh, you can only do so much and, and no more. I mean, I've had tremendous fights with Navya about, you know, stop posting these pictures on Instagram. She's and they always, beautiful. Thank you. I, she really is I wish so I could take more credit for that, <laughs> but I can't. Um, and... Um, you know, and there, it was a, and then on one hand, I felt, why am I curbing her? This is her account. She should be allowed to do what she wants. She should have a normal, you know, yeah. life like anybody else in school. And, and then on the other hand, you know, there, there's so many nasty comments. And then, mm -hmm. and you know, eventually she learned herself. She realized what is she could post, what she couldn't post, and um, I think it's it's tapered down now. It's, but is it is it? even like right now, as you do become more of a public figure, is it sort of a daily kind of question, like, should I do this, should I not do this? Or is it becoming easier? No, I don't think it's easier. I don't think it gets easier for someone maybe like me. Right. Um, yeah, it isn't. It and is, also, yeah. uh, I've grown up in a fishbowl. Yeah. So I've always had people sort of, you know, commenting or looking at my life from the outside. Obviously not knowing anything of what life really is like. So. I, I should be used to it. It's a shame that I'm not, but uh, who knows? I mean, if I can start work at 44, maybe I'll get used to it. <laughs> there you go. Listen, <laughs> you've done harder things. So. No, no. <laughs> but Shweta, the part of also being a public figure is is then sort of put setting yourself up for criticism. I yep. mean, there was that whole sort of backlash about the label and about plagiarism and. How did you respond to that? Um, I mean, you know, you have to just grow thick skin and you have to carry and you know what you're doing, you're doing with integrity. So you have to just let it go. I don't have thick skin. I'm trying to develop it. Really? Yeah. So these things bother me a lot. But I guess I'll learn. I have but, no choice. You know, I don't know a whole lot about the fashion industry, but how does something like that happen where you have two things which look so similar? 
Um, I think it's a very generic. Um, it's a it's a very generic motif, and it's a generic um, slogan. And of course, creative people can have similar ideas at the same time. And again, this is a very. If, I mean, if you go do your research and you go look at it, which we did, mm. it is a generic design, and it is. It's not just one sweatshirt. Like it's it's like you know there are many slogans that are done in various ways and forms. It was not done in the same way, but anyway, it's, it's done and dusted. Does it By the way, I just want to tell you, it's our largest seller. <laughs> We've sold out of it. Really? Ironically, <laughs> yes. So, yeah. But does it, does it make you wearing Shweta? Does it sort of make yeah, you? Yeah, your initial reaction is to, to go into back. your shell a right. little. Yeah. But then, I mean, how long can you stay there? And then there's no growth if you're in your shell. Tell me, what would your advice be to other women who want a sort of midlife renaissance? I would say go for it. I would say um, if you have a desire, you should, you should do it. You're 44, you have maybe what, 20, 30 odd years left. And now it's not the time to be a shrinking violet and go out there. It's, it's, it's never been a better time for women to actually put themselves forward and achieve things. Um, I'm not saying it's an ideal uh, place or platform for women, but it's better than it was. Yeah. And, um, you know, you should go out there and do it. I know it's easy for me to say, because again, people are going to say oh, what, you know, it just got handed to her on a platter. But I do feel that if you're, you know, if you're 44 and there's something you want to do, you should try and do it. I mean, is, I did. Is there a, almost sort of a greater joy at this age? I, I don't know, I find like I'm, um, enjoying things so much more because I have such an awareness of yeah. how little time there is. Yeah. You know? Um, again, I have no reference to context because I wasn't, I mean, I, I was a mother at 23 and that's what I've been till now. Um, so oh, that is so young. Oh, yes. thank God. So, uh, Which is why the two of you look like sisters. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how happy my daughter is about that. <laughs> um, but... Uh, I mean, it feels wonderful to be 44 and, you know, be given an opportunity or for people to even be acceptable and open to what I'm doing. So I think that's great because I know they're younger, cooler, maybe more talented people, but it's, it feels amazing to be a 44-year-old woman who is being able to have a chance to express herself. Yeah. And I have to ask, because she's so beautiful, acting ambitions? Uh, no. <laughs> Not at all? No. Really? Yeah. She's, she's in college and she's studying and um, I think she's, she's, you know, I would want Navya to be a professional, um, earn her own money, um, stand on her own two feet, do her thing. But she can do all that in the movies um, as well. But I think you have to have an aptitude for you it. Do. Or you no, have no. to, you know, you have to want it. I, you I have don't to be see, obsessed with it, I think. Yeah, I don't it's a see tough that. business. I don't see that in Navya. And again, it's, you know, it's, it's funny because, you know, people ask me that all the time and I don't see why she should have to want to go into that line. Not at all. She could, you know, she yeah. could become a businesswoman. And, of course. And, and do whatever she likes. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, whatever she would want to do, I would encourage her to do. But she doesn't want to act. You know, um, your dad just posted this really sweet picture of you and Abhishek. And, and um, just like literally, I think, on my way here, mm -hmm. I, I, I saw it. And it was, it's both of you as kids. And he's talking about how proud he is um, because you handed him a copy of the book. Yes. And, you know, of course, he loved Abhishek's performance in Manmarzia. Um, you know, what, what does that feel like? Abhishek had once told me this great story about how for a fleeting moment, uh, after Dhoom uh, became a big success, and that was his first hit, he said, I had, I sort of had a little swagger in my walk uh, because I thought I finally arrived and I made it and I got home and, you know, Amitabh Bachchan opens the door and then you realize, okay, you're nothing. <laughs> and that's the man. I mean, what is it like to be his daughter? So, um, when, when I look at him, I don't look at him as an actor. I look at him as dad who I have lunch and dinner with and who I spend time with. And, um, but even in that, when you have someone who even at 76 wants to push themselves yeah. and wants to learn more and do more and has, is so busy through the day, it's, it's not just in the, knack, in, in the field of an actor or no, in no, film. No, no, it's as a human being. It's just being. as a human yeah. being when yeah. you have a parent that, and actually both my parents, my mother too, I mean, a lot of people tell me oh, at 44 you started, but my mother in her 50s 
just, you know, and from being a homemaker, she was an actress, she gave it all up. And then from being a homemaker, she, she you know, she jumped into, you know, the Rajya Sabha and doing that. And she's, she's brilliant at it. She takes her work seriously. She, you know, wants to give a voice to women. And I think she's doing it beautifully. And, um, and she did it at like 50 plus. So, I mean, when you have that at home, it just it inspires, I mean, you don't want to be lying on the couch watching TV. You want to go out there and you want to say, I'm busy as well. You know, my dad at 76 is waking up at six in the morning and he's finished three things before midday. I know. I mean, so, you know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I, I once asked him, and he, he was telling me about his, his life. I mean, it was like, you know, the gym. And like, he would begin at 6 and end at some 12 because he'd be blogging. 12 uh, minimum. Yeah, 12 minimum, right? So I said to him, I said, when do you sleep? And he looked at me really with a straight face and said, during interviews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He doesn't but, sleep because he's up so late that sometimes if I'm out for dinner and I come back and he'll say, you came back very late. And I said, but why were you up? He said, I was up working. So, so I feel really terrible. <laughs> he's checking on us at 2, 3 in the morning, he knows, because yeah. he's awake. It's, it's a very high bar. Yeah. But it's yeah. a very inspiring bar. I always tell him I want to be you when I grow up. <laughs> you yes. know, literally. I want to be him when I grow up. Yeah. Even just a little bit of him. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's no, just, just... Not just what he's achieved, but just to have that desire to still want to yeah. do more and, and just be so much more. passion. Yep. And, you know, go out there with that energy and that excitement. Yes. yes. It's amazing. Yep. It's... No, no, I totally... I, I completely relate. So, so, no, you can't be lazy. No, you... Yeah. <laughs> ne you can't be lazy. With neither of them can you be lazy. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's good. Better late than never, though. So. And what's what's next for you? <clears throat> uh, another book. Really? Is yeah. it already in the head? Uh, it's already... On paper? It's already sort of semi on paper. Wow. It's in the head. And I'll flesh it out after all this is done. And the next collection for the brand, which is out in December. So That's it's really quick. already being designed. Yes. People um, just want more, they want to do more, they want to see more. So you have to be, you have to be at it. You can't rest. No rest for, for the, the weekend. weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Shweta, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. And good luck for the book. Thank you. And all the lovely clothes. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hi, if you like this video, please subscribe to Film Companion.